Okay, you know the situation. You've modeled a project and you're just getting ready to send off the presentation rendering, but something is missing. And you don't have the time to model it yourself. So what do you do? Exactly, you download it from somewhere. There are hundreds of sources of textures and objects, and Vectorworks has support for just about any format you can possibly download from anywhere. So here we are, and what we need is a nice duvet for the bed and perhaps some pillows. The search on Archive3D gives us several pages with beds and pillows. Let's say I've found a bed with a duvet on page 3. I'm downloading the model and the extracted archive is now in my downloads folder. There are several files. The importable file is the one ending in 3DS. Before I import I create a blank document, then I simply drag and drop the 3DS file into my new Vectorworks document. In the import dialog I have Vectorworks create Renderworks textures for all materials. I only need the duvet so any extra textures won't matter when I copy the duvet to the project file. So here's the imported model. The resource manager shows that we have four new materials. With free resources, there's always a little extra work involved, but nothing too serious. First, let's check if the texture that's been assigned to the imported mesh has UV mapping. In other words, does the texture align to the model properly? In the render tab of the OIP, check the map type is set to imported and you're good to go. Now let's examine the texture proper. The color channel is set to color. There is often a texture supplied in the download, but the file specifying the import has got lost or is corrupted. You can always load it into the texture when you've finished if that's the case. In this case, all I want is a plain color. Not so for the bump. The original model has a quilted duvet. Since my imported mesh doesn't have that feature as part of the model, it was most likely achieved by a displacement texture. So let's go look for it. In downloaded archives, there are often subfolders with textures. The GSM file specifies where these textures live and how to import them. So let's drill down a bit and voila, here's something that looks usable. And here's the diffuse as well, but I'm not going to bother with it. I'm using 20mm displacement. By the way, don't panic if the preview's way off. Since we're using the imported UV mapping and not the scale provided here, it has no meaning. Imported map types don't respond to scaling. So let's check what this looks like in a viewport with the correct custom renderworks settings. Obviously we need to enable displacement and I'm switching on anti-aliasing and full screen preview. Let's set this to 1 to 20 to get it to render fast. Now let's update the viewport. OK, what we have here is another common problem we encounter when importing geometry. The displacement is reversed. It shouldn't be because the darker pixels in the image we're using define the deepest displacement. However, sometimes the normals of the meshes we import are reversed. Nothing to worry about, Renderworks can deal with that. Have you ever wondered what the invert button is for? Exactly that. Now I have inverted the displacement map and I'm updating the viewport. Ah, that looks much better. So it's time to copy this guy over to our project file and place it on the bed. With Ctrl L you can rotate twice by 90 degrees to get it to face the bed and a little moving around and some nudges and we should be pretty much there. Don't forget to check in a side view for Z positions but this already looks just like the ticket. A quick update of the viewport and our scene has been enhanced with just a few clicks and some inside knowledge. When we deal with landscape design projects, plants and vegetation is always a challenge to get to look good. While it's easy to import trees from the supplied Vectorworks libraries or online sources, fitting, say, an ivy to an existing shape like that trellis can be time consuming. Fortunately, there is a solution for that too. Let's go to the design layer where the trellis lives. Now, we're going to need that trellis outside of Vectorworks to have it custom fitted with some bespoke ivy. The ivy generator wants an OBJ file to work with. No problem. Vectorworks has full support for OBJ in an export. So I'm selecting the trellis and going to File, then Export, and then Export OBJ. The export options allow me to save selected objects only, which I will do and save to disk. Here's the trellis imported into the free ivy generator and I'm having it calculate the ivy growth from the bottom of my trellis. Just a quick adjustment for size and it's actually kind of fun to watch too. You can stop it processing at any time by pressing the grow button again. On the birth tab we can turn this into an exportable mesh. Now we'll simply export the file back to OBJ and, you've probably guessed, re-import into Vectorworks by choosing File, then Import and then Import OBJ. Since I know I will only be getting the textures and geometry I need, I can safely import directly into my project file. Notice also the custom crease angle I'm allowed to set. 
This controls the smoothing of imported mesh objects on a per object basis. It overrides the document preference. Now all I have to do is re-render my viewport with the ivy in place and I have an overgrown trellis in my garden project. The ivy generator is available for Mac and PC by the way and it was developed by Thomas Luft at Konstanz University. That's the guy who invented the XFROC growth algorithms. Okay, here's a quick close-up of our ivy and uh, that's all for today actually. Uh, so see you next time.